Is this the same caramel shortbread? Oh, no, 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 no. What were you drinking at this time? Um, elderflower. <laughs> God, you sound really upset can, about that. I, I Do you wish it was something better? And <laughs> no, I just couldn't remember as as you asked me. And then, but I was also went into a mode where I was like, I was going to make a gin and tonic, but I couldn't be bothered. Ooh, thirsty Thursdays. Mm, but I could just couldn't be bothered. Yeah, I I hear. I've got a peppermint tea. Oh, that's the worst kind of tea. Why do you hate? Why are you hating on herbals? Because it's grim. No, I'm not hating on herbals. Peppermint tea is grim. Oh, it's so good though when you're feeling a bit bloated, and it just helps you force out those farts. Just take a. Uh, Rennie? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I've I've built up a tolerance to Rennies and Gaviscon and they don't work. And I need something a bit stronger. <laughs> I need industrial strength Rennie. Just drink Mr. Muscle. <laughs> That's for grime. That's not for bloat. It's not going to help with my situation. I mean, it'll probably be something. I feel like that's quite a good advert. It's for grime, not for bloat. <laughs> with... um. With Russell Kemp, is it, what's his name? Was it Russell Kemp? No, it's not Russell Kemp. Uh, Joss, Joss Kemp. Ross, Joss? Ro- <laughs> Ross Kemp. <laughs> oh, Joss Kemp is the unknown brother. Yes, you're right. Ross who, Kemp. Who are you combining that with? I'm confused. Russell Kemp. I don't really know. Russell, you were going Russell Crowe for absolutely no discernible reason. Yeah, or Russ. yeah. Definitely not Russell Brand. Really weird. Yeah, I really couldn't tell you, to be honest, on that one. Um, but it happened. It's for grime, <laughs> not <laughs> for bloat. <laughs> I didn't know you had a... Uh, that's, hey, actually, that came that came around at the end because I didn't yeah, know you had I, a brand in you. I d- I've never tried it. And I, I realised as I started, I needed this a restart. Hence yeah. the choppiness of the construction of that sentence. Yeah, he got he got through it and it actually came around nicely. Um, dear, oh dear. Mm, it, we're doing an evening recording, so... Mm. We might be we might be slightly sleepy boys, but hopefully that caramel shortbread's just going to get go right into your heart and give you the boost you need, yep. like Nas on F- Fast and Furious, except it's yep. Chocky Bicky. You'll know you'll know when I'm going. I start going. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> uh. Thursday night, it's Britain, and it's nearly Christmas. That's right, you're listening to... Ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> you're listening to... Alright! The wonderful... Oh, God. <laughs> Jules Holland gets really high when he introduces people, doesn't he? You just can't get through it, and it just keeps going up and pitch, and that's just how it works. I think. <laughs> I never watch it's... him on New Year's Eve. Do you? Do, oh. are, which Put one are you? Me. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? <laughs> or do you watch um, the other one where it's usually just like it's either great. I can't remember what I forgot. What Later. They call it. Later with Jules Holland. No, 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 no. It's either Hootenanny or BBC One or Two. I can't remember which way around. Where they they have the, someone like presenting outside, and then in a big building they have a concert. <laughs> no, I'm Hootenanny, mate, all the way. Oh, no, I, I'm not. I, I, the, the thing is, is that it massively depends on who's playing on on the other channel. Because at one time it was um, Queen with um, that guy who won a competition in America, Adam Lambert. Adam Lam- and it was incredible. He was so good and so respectful. Yeah, he, is, he is brilliant. Of the Queen thing. And it, it was so much fun to watch. I really like that that's your like glowing review of the like new version of Queen. It's so respectful. It's no, as, in, as in he wasn't no, I, like... I, I know exactly what you're w- saying. It's just a really tame choice of words. Because he was, he was clearly like an incredible talent, but was also hugely respectful of the fact that it wasn't his band. Mm. He very much came across as I'm singing someone else's song. I'm going to do this my best ability. No, I'm not Freddie Mercury. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Queen. And then just yeah. from then on in, it's just like we we're all on the same page here. Let's enjoy ourselves. And it was great. Yeah, yeah I think um, he won American Idol potentially. <clears throat> one that's of those. One. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the one. Um, anyway, enough of these two old queens. Let's get into episode <laughs> 23 of Pushing Buttons, baby. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> oh, it's good to be back with you, Mark. We've been away for a little, uh, probably like a week or so. We had our late night sesh after the video game awards. Oh, and rubbish. Yeah. It was a horrific late night. I don't think my body's quite recovered. Um, but we're, we're here. We're back again for you all. And... I mean, we'll get onto it soon, but really the entire gaming world has been taken over by the release of Cyberpunk, hasn't it? That yeah, is really... Ab- absolutely. It's all... It's... Well, for, for good and bad reasons, it is <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Memorific out there, but we'll get onto mm-hmm, all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will, we listen, will. Listen, you mentioned a new rule last week for the MVL, stating mm-hmm. that M- MVLs must be in place for two weeks. Um, yeah, it's an arbitrary rule, but I like it because we've had a, we've had a few MVLs that lasted uh, a, a long, long time, mm-hmm. uh, and poor Joe Anderson was going to have a one week reign. So to avoid the disappointment for him, you enforce a new rule, and that's completely fine. However, I put my foot down. Momi is this week's MVL, so congratulations, Momi for becoming this week's most valuable listener. Two weeks, I should say, minimum. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And we've got a fresh, new, spanking, swinging, rocking jingle uh, for you right now. Here it is. Mommy. Ooh. Mommy. I like this. Mommy. This sounds good. Mommy. Who's Mommy? Moby, I'm not phony Or when I say that everybody wants to know thee right. You can take this as my testimony okay. You're electric, got what's like Naomi I get it. If you start on board, will you grab a Tony? Right. Because you are the boss, man, I'll be your crony yeah. Basically, you're a really, really top guy MVL, hold tight, his name is Moby I see it's a rap about a person called Momi. Um I, I enjoyed listening to that Oh, man Good. That's that's. I think that's one of my favourites so far, purely because it's a genre we haven't tapped into yet. I'm talking about hip hop music. Ah, the 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 hippity hops, or as you know Ste- what I'm saying. <laughs> Stephen Merchant used to say, um, "Hip hop hooray." Yeah. Uh, which <laughs> definitely describes that one adequately. Yes, a genre created by Jim Davidson in the early '80s, I believe. Didn't he? create the Muppets. Jim Henson created the Muppets. Um, but Jim <laughs> Davidson also is just a racist comedian. He didn't um, He didn't come up with hip-hop. I don't actually know okay. who came up with hip-hop. Um, but Was it hey, Fresh Prince? Yes, it was Fresh Prince, a.k.a. the Duke of Wessex, who is uh, <laughs> Prince Ed. Is Prince Ed with the Duke of Wessex? No, I think that's a potato. Oh, brilliant stuff. So anyway, Momi, I hope you enjoyed that jingle there. Um, I really, I thought that this genre uh, suited you, as I know you're a youthful fella. Um, I thought you might enjoy it. I might be totally wrong. You're going to have to let me know what genres you like. I mean, that's not going to change the jingle. It's done now. Um, But (laughs) let me know your thoughts on it. Give me your review of it. And maybe you can go show all your friends and they'll be jealous and think, how the heck do I get one? I Sorry, I've just sti- I'm sti- You know when you're stifling some air coming up, you just start talking. Oh, right, that's what that was. Uh, yeah, it was like I was. It was I couldn't really get over it. <laughs> slowly becoming Hugh Grant as the, <laughs> yeah, as the just conversation slowly, uh, coming up here. Um, there you go, <laughs> Momi. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, jingle for you there, sir. And thank you for being our most valuable listener. I realised last week we didn't tell people, you know, I'm assuming most people have heard these so many episodes now and they know exactly how you become MVL. But if you want to knock Momi off that spot, he's had one week. He's allowed definitely one more week, but his reign could be just as long as uh, the tyrant uh, Jiggy Josky Jetty, who would not leave that throne um, if, if he goes unchallenged. So to become the MVL, aka the most valuable listener, all you need to do is tell five people about this podcast pushing buttons podcast tell five people and tag us in a post in which you are doing so that can be on facebook it can be on instagram it can be on twitter it could be on a you could draw it on a wall with some paint and then show us that you've done that that would be novel wouldn't it uh that it'd be a lot of fun to see some london Birmingham or New York or something listener who's just like tagged us 
Why those places? Via graffiti. I don't know. They're, they're places that inspire graffiti in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hear. For completely different reasons. You, um, yeah. you, miss, you left off Bristol, the home of Banksy there. True. But that's by the by. Never um, mind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Momi, thank you for your listenership. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, very, very quickly, extremely quickly, because we know the answer to this Whoa! already. What have we been playing this week? Uh, I okay. You can use the le- the the term uh, playing quite loosely here, but Cyberpunk twenty seven seven. I've experienced that, and I've also been playing a little bit more of Final Fantasy eight. But it's very hard to continue an RPG when another one comes along. It's uh-huh. a very odd. F- it's I'd say it's one of the only genres where it's like I can't be doing two RPGs at once. That just occupies too much of my brain space. So Cyberpunk twenty seven seven, bit of Final Fantasy eight, but I, I, yeah. So we'll we'll talk about Cyberpunk in a sec. But I went back to Final Fantasy eight to be like, I'm going to pick this up. I'm on disc three, baby. Um, but it it was just run like, oh no, what's that? Did you have you run out of steam? Well, it's it's more that something else is. is captured my essence and the flame has sort of moved from one burning half to another one and and i'm very much passionate about cyberpunk i don't want to spoilers i'm not i'm revealing my opinions but um i i was very invested in cyberpunk it's like oh i can't go back to this now so but i i will and you'll find out why in a bit but yeah i've been playing cyberpunk 2077 and final fantasy mark <laughs> what have you been playing <laughs> I've not been playing Final Fantasy Um, (laughs) Cyberpunk 2077, obviously. And um, a return of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which has Mm. been really nice, uh, actually, because I have a lot of friends based here where I live, and they're all PlayStation 4 players. Wow. So they they play, uh, you know, a few games together when they can, and they convinced each other, or someone convinced the rest of the group, hey, Modern Warfare is really good. Let's We're bored of remastered uh, the original Modern Warfare. Let's, boys, get this game, get it. Which put myself and a good friend uh, who is a PC player, Phil, onto the grid uh, because this game is cross-play. So we were like, sweet, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll join you. And it's been really nice because it's it, we don't play online with all the... Uh, riffraff we play in like a separate lobby um, mm. just just the mates you know depending on who's online it can be six or eight pure mates us. and it's really nice because it's like going back to the days of couch co-op except it just happens mm. to be online so it's been great just in doing that and killing each other it's great and, that's but that's good, all I've been man. playing been really busy so that you know just dipping into these two things yeah I've had a weirdly busy week as well actually and um, all, all of my free time was spent getting to where I am in cyberpunk so that's pretty much all I've been doing um okay lovely stuff that's what we've been playing seems like we both played the game cyberpunk 27 uh, 20 uh, 20 speaking of getting it wrong have you seen the meme going around of people calling it um cyberpunk 2076 which is a reference to fallout 76 just a, just a fun little addition a like little change change the set seven to a six makes yeah. it look it's uh I had, I, had, I had a chuckle all right don't don't jump on the case. I had a chuckle. Um, we've got some listener feedback, Mark. Yeah. Which longest, is really nice because it's, the, it's, it's the been a while, isn't it? I've ever received. It's, it is huge. Um, but, you know, he, he, he is, he writes, he does a lot of writing, so it doesn't surprise me. Is um, this the abridged version? So, well, he makes some really good points, Mark. And if I, okay. I cut out the stuff that's sort of the sort of uh, additional fluff to the point he's made, but we'll get through it quick. Basically, we've uh, got uh, a really love. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Ah, 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 ah. Ah. <laughs> we've Thank got you. um. We've got an email in from the wonderful Mr. Um, the, from the obviously uh, aforementioned long reigning MVL Jiggy Josky Jetty. The Pogues! Uh, Sorry. <laughs> the Pogues! So. Um, uh, it was, yeah, like I said, it was a very lengthy email. So I sort of chopped it up a little bit like a big old salad. And, I'll make um, you a deal. If you read yeah. it, I'll react yeah. to the points. Okay, that, that sounds sound? great. You are, you are. So, in, if we were commentators on a sport, you would, I would be the sort of commentator. You would be there for colour, as they say. You're giving the opinions, and I'm just commentating. Um, sure. So, I will read it out. 
So here we go. This is from Jiggy. I too thought the Game Awards looked incredibly boring, hence why I didn't bother watching it. I was thinking about the Last of Us 2 award for audio and thought it may have had something to do with its accessibility award. Game Maker's Toolkit on YouTube, which is actually a really great YouTube channel, shout out to them, um, talks about this. Did you guys realise that the entire game can be played blind? They have dedicated audio cues and narration to essentially describe you, your actions and the environment around you so you can play without looking. So, so this I, is a, 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 ref, a, a, a sort of retort to myself talking about the audio award for Last of Us 2. Um, basically, I, I, I thought it was a bit of a shoe in because it is The Last of Us 2 and therefore deserves every single award. Uh, mm -hmm. Jiggy, no, I didn't know that, and that is pretty incredible. Uh, so power I think to it's them. amazing. Yeah. However, they did win the Accessibility Award, so I yes. can't help feel like if it's an audio award specific to game audio and not something that is key for something else, then maybe yeah. it could have gone elsewhere. However, because that is... I've never heard of anything like that, and I'm going to go look at some like details on it to me that is i'm that's incredible i want to find out more so yeah i don't I, really I, understand it no neither do i so uh that is incredible and therefore i'm happy to drop it yeah <laughs> not yeah. that i was I, holding it but you know no no I mean. I, yeah i didn't see you holding it either yeah i think that's incredible and it definitely goes to say why they won that access accessibility award because that yes. if that is if that's true and that works absolutely incredible naughty dog hats off to you um was that irish not sure Anyway, uh, next up, Jiggy said, in terms of the announcements, yes, I'm pretty much only interested in the Bioware games. Uh, I was actually not interested at all in Dragon Age 1 or 2, and it was not until Inquisition I thought the RPG... Uh, and it was not until in Inquisition, I think there was a full stop there. I thought the RPG elements and gameplay aligned to a game I could really enjoy. Upon reviewing the trailer and looking properly, I didn't pay too much attention to the trailer on the night, and I couldn't hear it. I do think the Dragon Age trailer looked quite good. I mean, cinematics are essentially designed to only build hype and the character they showed in the trailer links the ending of in Inquisition so there's something cool to look forward to in the next game uh, I, I can't speak to Dragon Age at all and n neither I mean you, you you just don't really like it no I, I, I played the f first well I tried to play the first one and I was just like F this it's, oh, it's like genuinely terrible um, so that was the end is of it, is it my like, interest is it similar to like is it like third person I mean I've played Inquisition but I don't know about what one or it two are the, they sort of third person vibes I think as well. it is third person it's sort of it's. I mean it's sort of uh, you can't really compare it to Mass Effect well can you it's in the same era so like okay you have a party but the difference is from what I remember obviously in Mass Effect you don't control your party members you kind of point them and say go mm -hmm. there Yeah, I think it's potentially a bit more than that in Dragon Age where you can like point them to go somewhere and do their own thing or hey freeze the floor over here or something I can't remember if you control them or not okay. anyway huge digression Inquisition Jiggy has vouched for this one in the past because I know nothing about Dragon Age I wouldn't have noticed that there was a link to Inquisition um, mm -hmm. however Inquisition is also, always touted as the best one yeah. and I, at some point if I can get it cheap I'll I'll give it time of day um, and see what's going on. But until then, I, zero interest from me, I'm afraid. Cool beans. Um, yeah, uh, I, I agree. I mean, well, it's just, it's good to hear from a listener that is invested in Dragon Age because, like you know, we we don't have a lot of um, stake in it. So uh, it, yeah, it's good to hear that somebody was fairly interested. Um, now, the next bit is sort of, all the rest of it is in sort of reference to our various Mass Effect chats and the reveal that they had in the Game Awards. So, uh, G said, I forgot to email in with my thoughts on the next Mass Effect game for the, from the pod the other week, but I wanted to say that the cinematic trailer matched nearly exactly what I thought would happen. My original thought was that Bioware would ignore Andromeda like you guys hoped and would continue, not prequel or redo, the original trilogy. My original thought was that Bioware would explore the redesign and recreation of the galaxy following the defeat of the Reapers. Uh, I think it's also known as the, like the disrupt. This is a side point. I think it's also known as like the destruction ending. If you choose that, if that's the ending you ended Mass Effect 3 with, it's where like all of the Mass Effect relays get destroyed, isn't it? And the, obviously the Reapers get defeated. Anyway, yeah. um, 
I thought of it like Reconstruction following the American Civil War, where the politics of Reconstruction would match perfectly the political RPG elements so intrinsic to the Mass Effect series. Um, cool take, uh, Ari, the American Civil War things. I mean, he's just basically sounds like uh, he agrees with us in that he that's what he hoped it would be in the, a sequel. And I, It was something we mentioned we sort of very lightly is the political situation is such an amazing backdrop because it doesn't shove politics in your face and go, mm -hmm. here's law, here's law. It's kind of a, th a thing. You get a sense of how humanity is viewed and how humanity is quite, comes across as quite brash and prideful, but we clearly mm -hmm. have ideas and a presence within the galaxy and all these other races. Um, so yeah, it's sort of in agreement with us, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, and he continues and finishes by saying, My fear for Mass Effect, however, is the infinitization of the series. By that, I mean that I fear that it will become an unending series, the likes of which can be seen in any other games, and especially in cinema with Marvel or Star Wars. I think an important point to, make, to be made is, yes, we all want a new Mass Effect, but do we need one? Is it best for the series? I want to call on The Last Airbender as an example of this. That series had three seasons, and each season was a continuation of narrative that resulted in a permanent and conclusive end, apart from uh, The Legend of Korra, which has just been released on Netflix and is I'm starting to watch. Anyway, um, which I think is how long narratives per series should be made. The same, can't, can be said, the same can be said for Mass Effect. There were three games which had a continuous story, with each game building upon, its re upon it to reach a conclusive end, no matter how unsatisfying some found that ending. And he just ends by saying, P.S. I thought It Takes Two looked cool as well. That was a game with the annoying book. Um, do, do you think that it's <laughs> dangerous that um, Mass Effect is, is being infinitized, as he said? Do you think it should have ended where it did? I think that... It, it, it's it was going to be infinitized by Andromeda. Andromeda was was the was the that that direction that Jiggy is worried about is what Andromeda was in my mind. So the idea that it's like cool, Mass Effect trilogy happened. Let's now just kind of jump ahead and continue on the legacy and kind of we can yeah. make as many as many of these as possible returning to this means that you're you're sort of you're back in the groundwork of the legacy of the original mass effect and you have to stick within those sort of rules and the canon that's already been set up it's you're not jumping so far ahead that it's like cool what could have happened in 200 or 500 years or whatever yeah it's, this is uh it's clearly liara if you pause on liara's face you can see that she's aged a bit so yeah yeah it's probably 10 years maybe 20 i don't know how long they the asari race live i can't remember i i, I understand the point it is it's a constant problem mm. uh mm. where you just stretch something out and it's like we well, could just continue this it, it's making money right assassin's creed is one of those yeah uh, for sure because they're all they're like the the links between them are utterly meaningless, and they're they're changing up the gameplay and all sorts of things, and not necessarily for the better. So they just stretch it out. With with this, it's difficult because Mass Effect is is this amazing place that I don't necessarily want to leave alone. I'd like to see more, and I think what we're seeing here is in line with the trilogy. Um, going back to my original point, where Andromeda was very much a what should we do? Let's make some money. Whereas this feels like a better direction, a more solid foundation. Yeah. What are your uh, sort of thoughts? Uh, 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 yeah, and what I'd say is that I would probably agree with him had Andromeda not happened. In that, I would say if it if it was if we had just left it at one, two, and three, I'd be like, we don't need any more, man. Like we had we had three really great games, and they almost screwed it up with the ending of three. It's like fuck it, mm. just leave it as it is. But Andromeda has left such a sour taste in people's mouths that really it sort of tarnished the Mass Effect image. And they, if, if nothing else, they probably really want to be like we need we need to sort of grasp back some some positive some positivity about Mass, Mass Effect by making. I mean, obviously, yeah, they want to make some money, but off the Mass Effect name. But yeah, I, I feel like a lot of this is to sort of retro retroactively be like, no, no, it was a, it was a, Mass Effect is really great and we're going to continue the con continue in that great sort of um, vibe and, 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 and make a really great game again. So just forget about Andromeda and yeah. I, 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 but I, I agree that I don't want them to necessarily keep going until it's Mass Effect 10 or whatever. But if it's just one more game that 
that that just really faithfully follows up from the Mass Effect trilogy, that would be enough for me. Um, and I do agree with them that in general there is such a thing as people getting burnt out by things. Like a lot of people are saying about Star Wars, how you know it's like okay, we get it, we, we've we've seen enough Star Wars now, and people got sick of a new film coming out everywhere every year. Um, I mean, I for one just love Star Wars, so I can just keep having it, inject it into my veins, even if it's crap. It's still Star Wars. Um, but yeah, I, I I definitely understand the sentiment here. Jiggy, um, but I think Bioware. I mean, I, I actually deleted some extra stuff that he was saying about mentioning more about Andromeda and as as Anthem as well. And I, I do think their massive shortcomings with those two games um, means they they just they just have a lot of lot to prove and a lot of pride at stake. And I think returning to it's it's like Star Wars: The Force Awakens, returning to something that was done so well. And just doing it in a very similar vein is quite a safe thing to do. I mean, it's, it is just—it's fascinating to know what they're going to what the, what they're going to do. But I think you're right in that it does just look like it looks like an older Liara. It looks like it's going to be her trying to find Shepard because at the, at the end of one of the endings of Mass Effect Three, like you saw Shepard like taking a like take a deep inhale or like twitch or something. They like in some rubble. So as in like it's very possible that this game could be about finding Shepard, whether you're controlling Liara or not, don't know. But mm. I'm well up for that. That is just a very simple concept. It's like, let's find Shepard. Great. I, I want to do that. Yeah. Uh, I think one thing we like sometimes forget about video games because they're an interactive experience. We often think of it as just gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. Does it play well? When actually there is probably a, a lead designer who is actually passionately writing and thinking about words worlds sorry do you know what i mean it's the mm. same as being a, pl- a playwright or a script writer or a director you know you're not just like thinking this will make money you have a passion project or an idea yeah. and yeah, then yeah. you put it forward um obviously you have to vouch for its uh, viability as a product but at the end of the day it's people there are there will be people behind it that were actually passionate about this and creating this world and i think that's that was one of the problems with Andromeda is that's clearly not the place they were coming from. They were like, oh, do, do you remember when we did that great thing called Mass Effect and people really enjoyed it? Cool. What made that good? I don't know. It was third person and it was spacey. Yeah. Cool. And, and then fucked it up. It's so all, like it's also the worry of you know any any production company that works for EA is always there's always that concern that that it's it's not decisions aren't necessarily being made for the right reasons. So hopefully it's someone. F- you know, or a group of people from the original team going, actually, we've been writing this for a couple of years. Here's our sort of storyboard of what we'd do if we brought it back for yep. real. So I'm hoping it's coming from that place and not one of, we've got a point to prove. Anthem was shocking. Andromeda was shocking. What are we doing with our lives? Yeah, Let's move on. But thanks for that, Jiggy. Some interesting takes in there. Um, there is a bit of news this week. Nothing massively fascinating. But um, like we said, a lot of it is about cyberpunk. But we'll, we'll, there's a few bits to go uh, through. I'll, I'll take this first little nugget, Mark, as uh, go for it. probably interests me the most. Um, there was a massive blog post put out by... Joseph St- Staten or Staten, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but he's basically he's a guy who used to work for Bungie for years. He then left Bungie uh, after Halo Reach came out, went and did some other bits, and now he's back at 343 to take over the development of Halo Infinite or try and pick up the pieces that were sort of left for him. Um, huge blog post that they put out detailing lots of things, dealing with feedback, etc. Uh, and it is now going to be released in the fall of 2021. So that's autumn to all of you British types. Um, <laughs> and basically in the blog post, they showed off some nice, nice, actually very nice looking screenshots from multiplayer maps and character models. Um, I, I, I mean, I know often games have separate teams for multiplayer and single player, but the screenshots for this looked vastly different to what they showed off in that demo in terms of um art, both art style and sort of graphical fidelity so that has me hopeful um showed off some cool multiplayer maps character models some some nice spartans looking all cool um and they also basically were just very open about um how they're dealing with the the feedback that they received the huge amounts of feedback that they received Talk, talked a little about about craig as well the meme and um mm. All that sort of stuff, but yeah. So, so they're listen, they've listened to feedback, and they're taking their time with the game as a result, which is only a good thing. And also, 
you know, taking everything into account that's happening at the moment in games, like, yeah, please delay your game if it isn't ready. So I'm glad that they are delaying it a little bit longer, but the jury's still out about what that's going to be like. I mean, you mentioned recently that Halo is a sort of... To, to you personally is uh, is no longer uh, something that you particularly get jazzed about or care for going back and revisiting the old games. It still has a huge amount of real estate in my sort of passion for games, um, but I was very disappointed with what I saw for this game and also Halo 5, which was plops. So they've got a lot of making up to do. Speaking of infinitization <laughs> yeah I, I just yeah put, just can we we should just put a pin in halo and move on like the world the, the gaming world will be better off for moving on you know make something fresh that you know microsoft people can get excited about halo halo is in the past it was a lot of fun i have a lot of respect for what bungie did with it um a great original story it's not aged superbly but a lot of games from that era haven't Really, that there's only a special few that it really I think of you know Mass Effect included that that sort of stick with you. It needs to it needs to end. It is the absolute antithesis of what uh, Jiggy was actually talking about in that email. I think Halo, uh, even though he didn't mention it. But. I don't agree personally. Just, just well, I know you wouldn't. Yeah, just because Halo multiplayer for me is just something that is like you mentioning going back to playing COD, which again could be an argument for like the infinitization of games. Like when they when they hit something right in the multiplayer of Halo games, I, I have the most fun in Halo multiplayer. Like I, there's something about it. I don't know if it's the movement, the guns, or just it feeling a lot more fun than other multiplayer shooters. I just have an absolute blast playing that multiplayer and yeah I, I i don't hold massive hopes for the single player who who knows what that's going to be like but i think it's just something about halo i don't know if it's the soundtrack if it's the world but there's something magic about it for me and i can just be spoon fed it every single day of my life um but i do agree with you was, that was the halo 5 multiplayer any good so, so the, the halo 5 it. multiplayer was some of the best they'd done in a while but mm. this so yeah the campaign was just dog shit um, right. So yeah, I, I, I and I do totally understand what you're saying. I think it's also hard because it is just synonymous with Xbox. And like, if they yeah. if they were to not do Halo, it, it it would just further make their very empty sort of I don't know bookshelf. Yeah, but they could of, just do other things. They, they need, yeah, they, but, need ta- they need talented like people to just make other things. You I know. I agree, but there are so many people that want Halo. There's like millions of people that want it. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah I, I agree with you though that I I mean it seems hopefully that's what they're doing now is I would just want them to take some time over it and make it a game that everybody wants and needs as opposed to just mm. another an, an, another release it needs to be something that's reinventing it and something's pretty damn special um, hey hey, but I'd be love to pr- be proved wrong Gen- oh yeah like genuinely I'd, I'd absolutely be love to prove wrong like come come out with something absolutely that slaps like I just, I just don't see it happening, especially with everything that's gone on with this. It doesn't um, look good. It doesn't. No, it doesn't look good. Anyway, uh, the next piece of news is UK politicians fighting to ban console scalping and the use of bots. How are they going to do that? Anyway, <laughs> IGN have said the motion aims to prohibit sales of consoles and computer components beyond the recommended retail price. Interesting. Ban bulk buying by automated bots and prevent resales at inflated prices. The motion specifically mentions a 2018 UK law passed to prevent rip-off prices on resales on tickets for live events, something we've become very used to Mm -hmm, to be honest mm -hmm. with you so it'd be nice if that industry could see the same you know intervention that Mm. law forces secondary sellers of other live events tickets to be transparent about the original price of purchase and other details pertinent to a purchase as well as forces the reseller to prove they own the item in question to prevent fraud Uh, Um, you you sort of mentioned as you were reading there all of this sounds incredible but how the hell are they going to make sure it happens because generally people on the internet are much smarter than some politicians standing up and saying don't do this it's wrong in in separate news uh, attached to this piece of news there was a guy that uh, i don't know if it was ebay i think it probably was ebay he put the title on the sale was something along the lines of sony playstation 5 dash read before purchase capital letters dash print out and then it was like the top of the description was like in all caps and bold, 
read before yeah, yeah, purchase. Yeah, yeah. And it was the price of a standard PS5, so it was or, or a little bit more, like five hundred <laughs> quid, yeah. five hundred dollars. And the the description said, "This is a printout on an A4 <laughs> piece of paper of a PlayStation 5." <laughs> This is to catch bots. If you're reading this and you're a human, this is not a PlayStation console. I think he made money oh because the bots will immediately search the price and the like the initial title yeah. and won't pick up on the fact that it's a piece of paper. And I'm really hoping some scalping bastard received a piece of paper oh, for the printout. That's genius. This guy is the Robin Hood of our generation. I love it. That's amazing. Made me laugh a lot. It made it made me consider doing it, but I think my eBay account would probably get banned, so I decided. <laughs> but that's great because it's someone someone beating software by doing something like very very manual and doing something practical like <laughs> like printing yeah, out yeah. a piece of paper. That's incredible. Such an analog solution. Yeah, exactly. To a um what a guy! But having to put like read before, <laughs> yeah. like, say that. I thought you were gonna. Going, say, I thought you were gonna say that some like poor like mum has bought it in America for their well, kid maybe. or something. <laughs> like, yeah. M- maybe I've no idea, but I'd hope he. I would have hoped that he would have got back to them and being like, "Can you just send me some details about it?" Cool, you are literally a poor. Yes, yeah, have your money back. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just imagine Ugh. some kid opening up an envelope on Christmas Day. Enjoy your PS5, son, and he opens it. <laughs> it's very thin. <laughs> yeah, it's very thin. It's new tech. Must be the new technology. Um, next up, Nintendo are claiming that they are purely focusing on existing Switch models rather than a potential Switch Pro. What the hell are you talking about? Uh, this is from IGN again. Um, in a new interview with Polygon, Doug Bowser, head of Nintendo America, the greatest name for the head of Nintendo ever, touched on the rumours of a Switch Pro and whether or not the company is looking at a refreshed Switch with more powerful hardware down the line. He said, the success of the current models, the Switch and the Switch Lite, allow the company to view life cycles differently and that Nintendo's focus is on the momentum of those models at the moment. Doesn't it make you sick? That doesn't answer the question, so it's happening. Do you think? Yeah, that's PR. That's PR. Push that question aside and sort of talk about the subject without... It's it's a non sequitur because they've asked, yo, what's happening? Switch Pro? And he said... Oh well, we've got we've had real good success, and we could just look at the life cycle differently. So we're gonna, you know, we're looking at those those life cycles. He's not actually answered the question, but saying so, that Nintendo's focus is on those models at the moment. Yeah, but the Nintendo always say that they're assholes. <sighs> look back to the original release of the DS and the advance. The advance Game Boy Advance was extremely popular, and they said, "No, of course we'll keep developing for the advance." Ditch the advance. 3DS came out. Oh, no, the DS is still legitimate. Well, of course, we'll keep going with that. And to be fair, they, they did for a long time, but eventually ditched it. Switch comes out, hybrid console. 3DS owners are going, oh, what? But, like, this is great. Like, are you going to stop doing this too? And, like, they basically just continued developing for the games that were already in the life cycle and then ditched it a year later. Yeah. Like, they always say this. They do. This is nothing new. It's just... This is PR talk. They'll have some sort of 4K standalone desktop only thing coming out next year. Whether or not they have a new Switch Pro, whatever that is 4K or just 1080p, I've no idea. But that basically what he said is a load of smoke and mirrors. I hope it is. I do. I I, I hope it is really. And I, I, I half don't like a lot of like. Uh, I, 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 the reason why I don't like it is because the Switch isn't being given any support at the moment, and, and we've talked about this in the past. In that, like, it's the too same. Too busy making Nintendo Land. That's you, why. Well, yeah, um, it's the same console that it was when it released in 2017. So the fact that they're focusing, they're saying they're focusing on it. Like, what does that mean? Um, and by that, they probably mean we're bringing games from the Wii U to the to the Switch. That's what we're doing. Um, he just mispronounced panicking, I think. <laughs> But the thing is, people like the Switch is still the the, the reason is is because it's still the best selling console month by month in the world. So it's like, of course they're focusing on it, and of course they're not implementing on it in any way, shape, or form. Um, they're just putting remasters and remakes on it. Anyway, uh, sticking with Nintendo, uh, they did suddenly poop out another one of those showcase the things. Indie showcase. Again, didn't see it coming because they don't. Foreshadowed they these announced tools. it the day before, I think. Yeah, something like that. And it was the final indie showcase, and they didn't show up to the game awards. So I think when they suddenly went, oh, we've got one more, one more thing before the year's out, I think some of us thought, 
oh, maybe they were saving it for their own indie showcase and they do have something to say. Okay, Nintendo, cooey, here we go. Uh, the Nothing. I mean, to, to be fair to them, this is an indie showcase, so it's not Nintendo games. So it's on the head of all the other in- indie studios for not giving them good games to show off. But nonetheless, still bored. They didn't need a showcase for this. Anyway, it was a load of fluff after fluff, followed by Among Us coming to Switch, like, fine. And uh, <laughs> Splunky 1 and 2 coming to Switch, which I, I know you're a Splunky player, Oh, um, I've pl- so maybe- I, I'm not. I've played. I played the first one because it gained a game pass for about an hour. I'm not a Spelunky player. Uh, As in, I've oh, played I it. I've played it. Oh, okay. But maybe it'd make a good Switch game. I'm not interested. I think, I think like- it would. Yeah. Um, but that was literally it. Those are the only two of note. Yeah. Oh, um, it was a lot dope. of people were praying for Silk Song. Oh, I want it so bad. Didn't happen. Lots of cat-based games. Yeah, there was like a. I don't know what it was called, but it looked like a cat simulator. But like Smash Bros. Yeah, fighting cats. Yeah, I can't remember what that was called. And there was one called Calico, which was where you build your own cat cafe and go and find cats to put in it. So there, yeah, that was the Nintendo <laughs> Indie Showcase um, f- filled with a lot of guff. Um, final piece of news that ties into our uh, main course for today is from CD Projekt Red themselves. Um, now, if any of you are on, online, so to speak, using the World Wide Web, you will recognise their their infamous yellow background of shock and awe that they put various pieces of text over the top of. And they brought out another large paragraph, basically apologising for the console's versions, uh, the console versions of the game, and announcing that patches are already due uh, but the bug fixes won't come till January 2021, which is a uh, full month after the game has come out. Um, those, it, those big fixes rather than bug fixes. Yes. Oh, big fix. Sorry. I already do. But the bit. Sorry. So the patches for the bugs and stuff and performance bits already do. But the big the big fixes won't come till January 2021. If you want to read about it for yourselves, check out CD Projekt Red, CDPR on Twitter at Cyberpunk Game. Um, and also, as a side note to that, Mark, they've also been talking in that original apology post, they said, and if you're still not happy with it, you should, you should, uh, we suggest going and getting a refund. And that, of course, made a lot of people think, oh, sick, CD Projekt Red are going to help us out get refunds for um, our game. They're sort of giving us a, a ticket, a voucher that is redeemable for the refund. But basically, they were just saying, Go and try and get a refund. And obviously, yeah. PlayStation and Xbox were like, "We don't have to give you a refund if we don't want to." But- they they did they did they did give them a support email. I think. Yeah. So if yeah. if you're having trouble with your retailer, um, you can uh, get, like give them the basically contact them with a support ticket, and they will get involved. I don't know how much involvement that is. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Uh, but you'd like, right. to, you'd like to think that everyone sort of will just play nice and get on with it. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, it's those console versions. Um, I suppose we could get onto the main topic now and get into that. Otherwise, we're going to accidentally fall into it anyway. Yeah, we yeah, it's quite easy. It's a big hole. It's a large hole, so it's quite easy to trip up and and just fall head first into it. So it is a big hole. You're right. It's a it's a large. Someone hole. should put a manhole cover on there. A very big one, and say man whole anyway so (laughs) in terms of technical things there has been a lot of stuff going around online about people's different experiences with the game um we are both we also both enjoy the videos of digital foundry because they just take very sort of unbiased solid looks on a very very core technical uh performance of both hardware and software so i know that you've had a look at their sort of findings uh, on the technical side with the game i've watched basically every single one shall i give the world's quickest rundown of where cyberpunk is at yes at launch yes the, the rundown of the previous generation is that ps4 pro is playable ps4 mm-hmm. is pretty horrible xbox one is disturbingly awful xbox one x is surprisingly bad yeah um i'm not going to go into the next gen stuff because obviously the game runs and maybe we could go into that another time but so let's get that but that's the rundown basically is that is that pc presumably you have decent specs you're fine there are a few bugs i can talk about the bugs i experienced 
Um, there are some, there's some funny stuff out there about like your penis coming out, your trousers and your boobs coming <laughs> yes, out, your, yes. your, your, your top and stuff like that and some other silly things. Um, but PC across the board, if you have the system for it, is playable. Previous gen, it's all pretty bad. Uh, new gen, it's good. It's playable. It's great. It's, it's, it, they're slamming it to 60 and mm-hmm. it's all, it's all looking fine and dandy, but your experience, <laughs> Well, you, yeah, I mean, you know what console I've got, so you know what my experience is, Mark. Um, so yeah. I, I still have a, a day one, or as uh, people seem to be calling it, a base Xbox One, was, uh, referring to the sort of original units that, that were out at the console launch. Um, it's, re- it's really hard for me to talk about this game because I... I'm, technical experience. Technical experience, uh, you, Let's not go on to the game. We'll talk about but yeah, the game okay. We we, we will we will. Um, it is possible to overlook some of these things, is what I want to say. But I won't, I won't talk on to about the game. Obviously, when you're playing it, it's like, oh, this is horrible. Like, why does it? This is awful. Like, just pure <laughs> awful. And and it is laughable. Like seeing like npc models like start off as these like huge boulder monsters and then slowly as the 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 character models load in over a course of 30 seconds um it, it all starts looking like it should do but and, and like just yeah the just just watching pretty much every texture load in before your eyes is just something that i haven't experienced since i was like trying to build a pc like 15 years ago um mm. And um, yeah, it, for a game for a game that revolves around fast gunplay and you know f- first person shooting, first person shooting being the genre that you need good frame rates for, it is um, it's not it's not good to play. Uh, so I've been having yeah, I can totally vouch for the for the low 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 frame rates. What I would say is that I can still tell that this is an incredibly beautiful game and. Uh, you you can sort of I'm trying to think of an analogy, um, but you, you you can see through the cracks that it, it is a stunning game and the game design is 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 incredible. I love the color scheme and all of this stuff, but it just looks like trash on on this console. And um, I've, I, and on top of that, you've got the bugs. Um, like um, there's a pretty there's a pretty important moment where um, a, a character dies. It's similar to the the, the the moment that I've got to in the game, and then they're, they're meant to be hold, handing you a very important. I had the same you, bug. Yeah, they're meant to be handing you a bug. very very. It ruined this yeah, moment. I know a beautiful moment and one that I know would have been incredible. Uh, they're meant to be holding you pretty much the most important, handing you the pretty much the most important item in the game, and. Um, and instead, he just he passed his gun to me. <laughs> he passed his huge pistol and oh, like reaches into his head. It was he- worse than that. He for reaches me. into his head and pulls out a pistol and hands it over to me and says, <laughs> "Like you take this, you're gonna need it," or something very emotional before he dies. And I was just laughing and I was like, "Oh, I wish I hadn't done this. Now I wish I'd waited. I really wish I'd yeah. waited because that that's ruined this." And I was laughing, yeah. and I was like, "I hate that I'm laughing right now because this is funny." Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, but is but uh, but is it playable? The, Baseline so, question again. Is, that you've played to the end of yeah. Act One, and which you've is which is a stop. lot. Which is it's probably about six hours of gameplay, and I did every side quest I could up until that moment because I'm a sucker for that shit. Um, yeah, and playable is such like a subjective term in that yes, it was playable, but obviously, <laughs> is it an enjoying way to play the game? No, sir. But is it playable? Yeah, I played it and I followed the story. <laughs> I did the missions. I killed everyone that I wanted to kill. But everything it was like moving through tar. It was like ev- or it was like I don't know, th- trying to throw a ball to someone, but someone's pulling your arm back. Someone's like stopping you from doing it. It felt like that. Um, so yes, it's playable. Does it play well? No, and again, again, I, I feel as though if you had been stood there watching me play it, I feel as though you would have taken the controller out of my hand and like set it on fire because I like je- like being <laughs> being someone who it's like, like putting a horse down. Yeah, is it, yeah, it was it was his legs broken. You just you got to <laughs> yeah, do it. Please buddy. look away. Put it out <laughs> of its misery. Exactly. Genuinely, I would have thought you would have you would have done that. So everything that you are hearing about how this game runs on base consoles is true. And it is hugely upsetting, and um, I uh, 
but because of these technical issues, I am. Um, we'll, we'll get onto that. But yeah, how about you? How about yeah. your PC? How how how's that holding up? Uh, <laughs> so I started up this game, and it 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 sort of did a similar thing to the, to what Doom 2016 did, which is have an absolutely slamming slap of a of a theme yeah. tune. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, I was like, yes, it's too loud. I don't care. <laughs> but and then and then like, it was automatically set to like a mixture of ultra and high, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm well, going with this. Maybe you sense you sense my PC's uh, got some balls, eh? <laughs> and I went into the game and I went, oh no, <laughs> oh no, oh, I need more FPS. Oh, no. <laughs> um, um but my word did it look good mm. um i i so I've, I've done a lot of experimenting Let, i'll cut to the chase here i've done a lot of experimenting um so i so i play all my games at 2k or 1440p and um i put everything on sort of medium and a couple things on low and see just to see where i could get it and i could and on, on the tougher sections it would dip below below like 55 and um yeah, and it would it would it would never quite reach sixty, which is kind of like the baseline of where I'd like to be, or or anybody should want to be, in my opinion, uh, for for video games. Um, I then dipped down to 1080p and put a lot of the settings to high, and was hitting sixty really easily. Um, the problem with that for me is obviously the game itself was looked better there are details that were better but i'm very used to a higher resolution and it's hard to differentiate something that where it's graphics and rendering versus pure resolution yes. it, it it's interesting because for me it's a lot to do with the sharpness of the image and i don't mean sharpness in terms of oh, edges yeah. and that sort of thing um and the sort of and sort of text, and I played. I reckon out of the twenty hours or so I've put in now, I'd say that I probably spent about an hour and a half at ten eighty p before I decided I need to go back because things just look a little fuzzier. I think if you're if you're used to playing at ten eighty p, I have a friend who has a ten eighty p monitor and was like, "Dude, we have we have very similar computers." Like, I'm 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 jealous of your two k screen. Like, how yeah. do I get more fps? And I was like. I was like, I, I threw him a load of settings and was like, try this, 1080p should have no problem. But I think he was thinking, I've got a beast of a PC, yeah, it yeah. should be an yeah. ultra. And I was like, it won't run at yeah. ultra, my dude. So I've got this sort of medium, some high kind of miasma going on at 2K. And to be honest with you, I'm just very settled on the fact that this is going to be running at mostly 40 FPS and going up to 60 for very brief moments in some areas and going down to 30 yeah. in others. This game yeah. is a beast. It's beautiful, but so it's I was, was going to say, is, do you think um, a, a lot of that is because of that or do you think some of it's optimization? Optimization always comes forward at some point and makes like, you know, a, a sometimes surprising amount of difference. Um, I don't know how much difference it will make, um, to be honest with you. It's one of my worries for the original console versions is that, like, how do you optimize for something that they've made yes. next-gen? They've unabashedly come, like, just at some point decided that, that this is a next-gen game and then just either lied, forgot, or didn't know what to do about these original base consoles. Um, in my opinion, they should have just, like, said, it's not going to run on these, sorry, guys. Yeah. It's yeah. next-gen only yeah. in PC and Stadia. But that's you yeah. know, another subject. Um, so I, I don't know how much FPS is going to come through from just optimization. It, it could be the difference of two. It could be 10 FPS, which would be huge. But the truth is, I don't know. Um, what I can tell you, though, is that if you have a 20 series or 30 series GPU right now, um, you're laughing because N NVIDIA has those DLSS AI yeah, learning yeah, yeah. tricks up their sleeve. And you will get 20 FPS just from turning DLSS on. Um, like the, the, those are the GPUs that are really going to make this the city look beautiful. That's that's um, where basically even without ray so that, tracing for for those that don't know, that's basically where it, the game is technically running at a much lower resolution, but it's sort of through AI, it's sort of upresing all of the the te textures, and it basically looks as though it is a higher resolution. Is it something like that? It's something to do with textures and and of a, a form of an, anti-aliasing. Um, so 
instead of rendering textures in real time at the resolution you're playing at, it will pull textures. Um, basically, the the AI learning is done elsewhere on other computer compute supercomputers and stuff, and it gets put into your straight into your NVIDIA driver. So when you download a driver, you've got everything that the AI knows so far yeah. for, for that game. Um, so when you turn it on, you can render stuff at a low resolution, but then it goes, oh, this is a brick. We know what a brick looks like and just does it up for you. Um, depending on how well up to speed the AI thing is that is in your driver, uh, you know, the better it will look. So sometimes it might be blowing up like a 720p res- resolution texture and it just goes, ooh, <laughs> yeah. okay, and now I'm looking at that one. It doesn't look great. Other stuff, you yeah. can't tell the difference, but you're gaining yes. 20 FPS because your computer isn't chugging away going summon all the textures of 4k <laughs> yeah, here yeah. we go um so it saves you a lot of fps it's incredibly clever it's so smart. and it's the difference for a lot of people between ray tracing and no ray tracing but the big accol- accolade that people are giving this game is that without ray tracing on ultra they have put so much work into the lighting shadows fogs volumetrics it looks incredible without um the main thing that um ray tracing seems to be doing is is light shafts and um just just like teeing up tidying up some of those reflections because they're in real time um you know they do look more realistic but in general the game just looks superb Mm. and i'm not like even half of what this game could look like and like i look at it and i'm like this looks great yeah i'm not blown away by it but i'm like wow i imagine if i I could turn this up even more but i'm choosing to have 2k resolution with the graphics card that i have and uh as much fps as i can get which is 40 so that's my that's my technical thing bugs very quickly um on day one i had one crash and then it didn't crash for hours in the last 24 hours i've crashed more times than across my entire 20 hours of, of game time i don't know why that is um it tends to be when i'm driving somewhere um, yeah, dri- so driving in general about. seems like to be the thing that the game struggles with. Well, certainly on the the current gen or old gen, I suppose it is now. Um, whenever I get in that car, the game is like, oh boy, I'm not cut out for this. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I don't know. May- may- maybe it just hasn't so, optimized driving yeah. very well in general. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, but I've not had that many bugs. My bugs seem to boil down to... The occasional just hard crash to desktop from it when driving somewhere. Um, th- th- I had the same bug with you at that tender, tender <laughs> moment where, but it, it manifested slightly different, but it's yeah, exactly yeah. the same thing. So, like, I was like, oh, this person's really yeah. going, aren't they? Uh, and then, like, they reached up to the head and I was like, oh, he still has his gun in his hand. Surely put this, oh, okay. The gun is through yeah, through yeah. this person's head, and he left it there as he took the trip out. <laughs> so, uh, and I was just like, "Well, this yeah. is dumb." But I've had the same thing with Johnny Silverhand when he's talking to me. If he holds a, if he holds a cigarette uh, and doesn't move it, when he next moves, he's still got the cigarette in his hand, but a cigarette left <laughs> is left suspended in midair and yeah. stuff like that. Just really silly yeah. things. Um, but the main bug that's reoccurring. Two main bugs that are reoccurring are in vehicles. I'll just suddenly mm. stand up and T-pose <laughs> oh, yeah, on top yeah, of my vehicle. Yeah. You gotta love a, you gotta love a good T-pose. <laughs> it doesn't last very long, but he'll suddenly T-pose. The other thing is areas that are like small parking spaces or pedestrianised walkways, like alleyways. If I drive down them, you can't. And I don't mean, oh, because there's a bin Mm. or a Mm. wall in your way. The car goes "Eh, eh, 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 eh," and just starts hopping forward, but I can reverse. So if I turn the car around, I can reverse at high speed, but I can't drive. It's an invisible wall. Um, So it's some. No, it's not a visible wall. It's like an invisible tar stick or something. It's really bizarre. So in front of um, the club, the Moxie Club. That is a classic example of where it clearly has... Because a lot of places in Cyberpunk, in Night City rather, don't have car parking spaces. It's like it's like a worse London, yeah. right? So there's just nowhere to park most of the time. So you just leave yeah, your car you in the road do. and yeah. F off, basically. This club has a, has a has like six slots in front of it and, and a driveway to get in, right? I can't drive in there. Oh, what? 
Because the chokes. Is this the, is this the, um, the sexy dancing club? One of them. One, yeah. one of many. It's like one of the main yeah. ones there. Um, where you meet, what's her name? What's she called? And uh, Judy's there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, yeah, I parked Judy. up there. I managed to park up there. I think it's uh, a PC Very thing, interesting. <laughs> so, but, but those, are, those are the two bugs the T posing and the weird car parking fiasco um, and the crashes. The, the, those, let's call those three then. So, those are three things. The, the rest are like minor visual things that occasionally yeah. happen. But in general, I'm not experiencing a wide breadth no. of issues or game breaking like bits yeah, and pieces. Yeah, I'm similar. I, I, I've just had a good dosage of T poses. I had one, one where I just like. I, I like to go up to NPCs and just where it gives you the option to talk to them. I just like doing it, see what they have to say. Um, and then I had one where uh, I went and went and talked to someone. You know, you know, in that sort of outdoor area where you first sit down and um, you'd make Jackie's like eating some sushi and you sit down and chat to him. Um, oh, yeah, I yeah. talked to someone. Ar- I didn't know you liked Chinese yeah, food. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, I chatted to someone there and they just t posed through the floor. They just they just sunk. Th- they just oh, sunk know. through the okay. tarmac, t posing the whole way. Um, I've very occasionally just been driving along and there's a car just half melted yeah, in the tarmac yeah. or something. Yeah, it's just like, some, okay. some of the floor's liquid, I think. And yeah, the, yeah, I haven't. Uh, I mean, I haven't played loads of it, but I haven't had like a silly amount of bugs. It's mainly been the 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 actual performance that has been my main issue. Um, so that so that's technical stuff and like bugs and just general how it's running. It's obviously really poor on uh, last gen consoles. PC is completely playable, but you know a few bits and pieces. I think everyone because PC builders we all have different manufacturers and different pieces bits of pieces to make our Lego bricks to uh, work that. There's always going to be people d- experiencing different things. So my my experience will be completely different or very yeah. similar to someone else's. But what about the game itself? You, you told me previous to recording this app that you've you've played up to at one and decided to mm-hmm. leave it. Um, but the game itself, are you did, are you enjoying it? What what do you like? Dislike? Are you sucked in? So so I've got to yeah the the. End of Act 1, I had the title screen come up and played a little bit beyond that. Um, I've met Keanu Reeves. He's sort of part of my life now. And that's that's where I've I've, I've stepped away from the game because it felt like it was... Can, can, I, just, can I just say, from yeah. a spoiler-free point of view, did you expect that character to manifest in the way that it did? Because I had a prediction, and I'm trying to stay away from spoilers, but I had a prediction that um, basically one one trailer I watched, I had one film title come into my head and that was mm. Fight Club. Yeah. And I think I was dead yeah. close with that. Uh, annoyingly, I, I I already knew somehow, basically. I don't know if it, I don't know if it was oh, okay. through the Night Wire, Night City Wire or whatever it was called, but I, I already knew. Um, I, I obviously didn't know exactly the events that transpired that would like lead up to it happening, um, but I sort of knew yeah. how we got there. Um, sure. Yeah, so... Um, I am there. And basically, it felt as though it was sort of the end of the intro and it felt like this is where now you're going to really be able to go off and do whatever the heck you want. And I was like, right, based on everything I've done so far, the things that I love the most about this game is, even though I think the story so far is great and I actually do really enjoy it, the thing, so right, I guess I'll just start with my general feedback. I I love this game. So it is exactly what I want it to be um, in terms of aesthetic, in terms of setting, in terms of just the way you play it. Um, it's it's what I said in lead, I think in our, impre- our, our, our sort of hopes for what the game would be like. It's, it's, it's got a lot of that original Deus Ex game that I talked about that I played on the PC a lot with my brother back in, well, t- probably like 20 years ago now, the original Deus Ex. Um, just has a lot of that feel to it and that is that a lot of that is to do with like the hacking the the guns the gunplay and just the 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 discussions and also just like the like in deus ex there was a lot of like asian influence and and that sort of thing and i just i love that Mm -hmm. um I, i i love so much about this game um and i had to i just had to stop where i did because the amount that it was upsetting me how poor it ran i was like i don't want that to be my takeaway from this game i have to stop now even though like everything in terms of the gameplay and the plot and the setting were drawing me in and being like just keep playing keep playing it was really hard i was just like i'm i'm stopping because this is too good i can tell this is too good of a game that i'm gonna love for me 
to keep having to play this the way that I am currently playing. It doesn't deserve this. And, and you know, I'm, I'm upset that I have the game in the state yeah. that it's in because I love this. I know I'm going to love this game so much and I love everything I've done so far. One one small thing I would mm-hmm. say is that, like, it's too easy to get loads of guns. And I, and I guess that's quite similar in as it is in The Witcher in that pretty much every enemy you kill will drop the weapon that they've got. And which, which is, yeah. I guess, realistic because you should be able to pick up their weapon. But, like... I found like quite early on that I already had way too many weapons. And I think maybe that's just because I'm not used to that in in like shooting games or of that sort. But I had so many guns at such an early stage. And I was like, I'm just going to have to dismantle all of these or sell all of these because it's annoying how many I have. Um, but yeah, I know, I'm, I know I really, really like this game. I'm just damn upset that it doesn't run like anywhere near it should be running. What are the things that re- have really like worked for you? Uh, or lived up to your own expectations. I think I I find I find the the gunplay really satisfying. Sp- particularly shot shotguns, just freaking love blasting people to shit with a shotgun. Um, I think the hacking the hacking works like well enough. Um, I find myself like not using it mid fight, but in the lead up to a fight, it's really fun to like tactically plan how I'm going to get into a fight by like, who should I hack? Shall I hack the camera? Shall I distract enemies and this sort of thing? But what I would say is that most of the time you don't really need to, like the fights are easy enough that you don't actually need to worry about that stuff. Like I could just go in guns blazing, but it's Mm. nice that you have that option. And I suppose that's part of that sort of RPG element. Um, Genuinely, in in the lead up to where I've got to, I I think the main storyline has been just great. Um, And I I absolutely loved the whole um, bit at the end of Act 1 where you're going into this big sort of corporate building. Uh, Oh, actually, I should say that... Mm -hmm. um, So I did Street Kid and you did Nomad, so we might have quite different... We Uh, might have different starts to the game. So did you... So this isn't True. too spoiler on because it's, spo- it's spoilery. So you meet Jackie, don't you? I'm guessing at some point. And yeah. then do you yeah, do yeah. this, the sort of heist in this big corporate building with him? Yeah, I don't think anything... I don't think oh, okay. any of that changes. Because I wondered if, if you were... Uh... I, think it's, I think it's interactions and chat options okay, that cool. change. Um, so... Yeah, so I just just all of that was just super intriguing and the way it, things go and the characters you meet, I think, are just really great, cool characters. Um, yeah, I, I I just wish it ran better, but I think it's it's excellent. I, and and it, fe- it feels like mm. the game that I wanted, which is the best thing about it, in that, like, from everything that I'd seen, I wasn't really expecting any more than this. Obviously, this game was so hugely hyped, but like, I don't know what more I could have expected, really, in terms of what the, the mechanics and how it plays and everything. I don't really... Like, one thing I will definitely say, the thing that... that you know when you have those moments, it's like, ah, yeah, now it's clicked. Like, for me, it was I was... I had just finished part of one of the main mission stories and I had the option to go and continue it. Um, and even though these sort of things happen in games like GTA, for some reason, this just really stuck out. I was just like, I was on my way to the next mission and I just saw this little area with like some dumpsters and some people by it. And, you know, you have a scanner and you can see Mm. if people are like wanted or if they're part of certain gangs and that sort of thing. And I just like got out of my car and walked over there. And there was just this gang of like wanted criminals who had just like taken someone hostage and handed them at gunpoint. And like, I don't know, it just felt really, I don't know, really immersive and special that I just got in my car, stumbled upon this thing and basically diffused the situation by absolutely killing everyone. And then this girl gets up and is like, thank you so much and runs off. So what are you called diffusing yeah, yeah. Kill a situation? Everyone. You'd be a terrible yeah, yeah. cop. Just, just kill everyone. Um, uh, but I think yeah, that's because it was my first experience of that sort of thing within the game and it just felt like it was done really, really well. Um, and I know that has been a thing that has been in getting these sort of open world games now for probably like five or six years and The Witcher 3 did it as well. It just, it felt really true to the to the experience of the city and the fact that I scanned this person, it's like, this guy's part of this gang. Um, he's wanted because of this. He's like, here are his weaknesses. All, all these things, it just felt really, really special. Killed all these people, got back in my car, went and did the next mission. And um, 
that's just that's mm. just like one of the things of about open world games that I just absolutely love, and and it seems to be. I mean, I'm like I said, I've only played about six hours or so, so I don't, I can't hugely talk to it. But for me, I feel as like the things that I'm going to love about this game are just going off and wandering around the city and just finding things and like discovering weird shit going yeah. on, discovering side missions. Like I've seen on on YouTube that that like just because I've watched little clips here and there of like there's this gun that you can find called like Skippy or something that like t- sings songs to you and talks to you and like there's just stuff that you can stumble upon in the game that I'm just so excited to go and find and experience for myself and then go and talk to a mate be like oh have you found this thing around the back of this club yet and they're like no I was like oh go have a look like those sort of things are the thing that get me excited about these kind of games and I can tell it's going to do that well so that's where I'm at I think it's great I mm. want to play more of it, but I'm stopping myself. Where are you at? Fair play. You've done 20 hours, did you say? I've done about 20 hours. I put a lot of time in today because uh, I sort of had a, a free day today. So I was like, well, I'm finally going to slap slap a load mm. of extra hours in. Um, I am very, I am teetering Ooh, on a fence. Ooh, this is juicy. Leaning toward, I am teetering on a fence, leaning toward okay. disappointed. I'm going to caveat everything I say with I've not obviously I'm haven't finished the game I'm only yeah. 20 hours in there may be some unlocks and things that kind of open up even more um but I am beyond where you are at I'm in the free section I'm doing what I want I'm I'm doing loads of side quests and stuff and continuing you know main stories when I want to um I'll start off on like just a few positives um the thing The two things that are the strongest thing about this game is visuals, obviously. I'm going to play this again one day when I have the money to slap a big, fat, juicy GPU in my computer, ray trace this bad boy and and, and just go, (laughs) Ah, Samoya Salamia, (laughs) and just soak in the vibe because they've nailed such an aesthetic. Um... I'm not super like into all the music necessarily. I think Doom, I'll always go back to Doom for soundtrack. You know, not everyone likes metal, but everyone starts headbanging yeah, to Doom music. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it does it so well. A lot of the music in this game is like, that's just a racket. Yeah, I'm with you there, off? I think. Um, to If if I'm honest. Um, but in terms of that, you know, it, it's putting the punk in cyberpunk and it's it's very... 80s retro uh, future aesthetic. And it's got attitude, that. man. And the game is, it's got attitude and the game looks incredible. That's one thing. Second thing, story. I'm invested in this story. It's fantastic. Um, I'm really enjoying all the different plot threads and um, just getting to know all the characters, which is the third point I'm going to say is characters. I even like the character I'm playing as. Um, and that's... Are you, are you so, male? That's important. Um, v. Cool, yeah. I'm male V, yeah. And... I think that it's important. You, you know, we liked Shepard. Uh, we liked Geralt. Thank God we like V. I think it would be a struggle if you're just playing as someone that you just think is a dick mm. or or a wimp yeah. or something. Um, and everyone I've met, I've liked or disliked for the for the right reasons. Um, the voice acting in this game is great. I. I haven't really like any complaints about characterization and voice acting in this game for the most part. Um, th- this is all like the strongest points is that I'm invested in this story, regardless of my caveats, which I'm going to get onto now. Uh, basically, a lot of this is a huge amount of nitpicks. The thing about nitpicks is are they things that probably ultimately don't matter if the game is good? I'd say, for example, if I if I say I'm nitpicking, for me, that means I like the game and it's great, but I'm going to nitpick on these things because it's worth pointing out, but they're so small that it doesn't matter. The problem is, is when you have enough nitpicks, they become a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why I'm absolutely teetering on the fence of disappointment with this game. And If dis- disappointment is on one I'm side, gonna... what's on the other side? Elation. I don't know. I like it. Okay, cool. It's a good game. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I'm going to read off just a bunch of like nitpicks because I've written them in the in a list. So this oh okay. so this is going to be oh, a, I wish I'd done a list. This is a, this is going to be a little bit fragmented, but we'll get there. Um, this does not necessarily include b- 
bugs. In fact, it does include one bug. So I'll get rid of that because those are irrelevant. Those are the kind of things that can be patched out, right? So sat nav sucks. There's no lane differentiation on the sat nav and it uses <laughs> it uses the old Witcher 3 dotted line, which is fine in Witcher mm-hmm. 3 because you're using dirt roads or like, you know, you're in a city that only has like little walkways and things. So you don't need like detailed, intricate sat nav system. It's you go in that direction, you're fine because it's an open world. This is a city with a with a intense like road system with arrows two-way and, traffic baby with, yeah with signs and everything so when the when the line suddenly darts off to the right and you go flying past you're like well it, was, it gave me no clue like that i was going to be the other thing it'll do is you'll be going on a motor- you sound you sound like my dad like in the car being like i didn't know i was meant to turn <laughs> then but like there'll be there'll be a, a slip road that you're supposed to go off but the sat nav decides just goes Drive into that central reservation and die, you <laughs> fuck. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? So that's the first thing. Sat nav sucks. Sort yeah. it out. Um, driving is like GTA. You'll get used to it. By which I mean, mm-hmm. <sighs> with open world games, driving is always this thing of you get into a car and you go, whoa, hey, I can't control this baby. And like, it always feels a bit weird because it's not like full on sim, but each bike, each car, uh, depending on the game, whatever, will always at least feel different and have like different things. Um, however, in this game, every car, every bike, all their brakes freaking suck. Do you use... I, I was just powering around with a handbrake on every turn because well, it's more fun. you kind of have to. Um, the other thing is the horn. Uh, in GTA... <laughs> I didn't know there was a horn. In GTA, people react to your horn. Uh, whether they're on the road or they're driving in a car or whatever, they will either tell you to F off or they'll dart out the way. The horn is meaningless in this game. It's just a noise. No reaction. It's a pointless button. So either get rid right, of it okay. or like actually make it do something. And as another yeah. um, annoying thing, on all the bikes I've driven, they all have the same horn and they work differently. So in a car, if you press the button as a quick toot, it will go, Fip! If you yeah. hold it, beep, you know, like a real yeah. horn. On every bike, it's the same obnoxious, horrible horn sound for some reason, and there's no small horn noise. It goes, beep. <laughs> why? Why can't I toot it quickly? But don't worry, there's no need because it does F all anyway. <sighs> yeah, it doesn't do anything, man. I really need you to tweet at Cyberpunk asking for a small horn. <laughs> Can I get a small horn on the bike, please? <laughs> the next thing is no car customized. Uh, customizability. So at the start of the game, you've got this um, like hatchback car. And um, in fact, no, let me talk about um, Jackie's bike. So Jackie gets a bike Mm -hmm. and uh, V, your character says, you know, you really ought to change out the exhaust system on this. Oh, why? It makes a nice, it makes a nice, nice noise. I don't know why he's Russian. He's actually Spanish. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, what are you talking about, dude? The girls love. Hey, it's a nice noise. Hey. <laughs> the girls love it, you know. And he's like, yeah, but everyone's gonna know that Jackie Jackie Wilkinson's coming from miles around. Anyway, basically, he gets the he he, he gets the thing changed. So I think in my brain, I go, oh, there's vehicle customization. Sick. I went. And bought my first car, and I bought the cheapest one that you can buy in the game. It was like twelve grand because I don't, I, I don't have like loads of money in the game, right? So I was like, I'll buy the cheapest one. And it was a bit of a rust bucket, but I was like, cool. I bought my first car. Feels good, right? Right. Where, where do I go to? Um, where do I? Where do I? Where do I? Um, I want to. What can I do this bad boy? Go on Google. There's no car customization, so forget it. That's an, that's why it's a really it's a really odd choice. It's such a it's not um, a choice. It's a huge omission. Like well, as in I I'm guessing it's a choice because they were like we don't have enough time to put that in. Well, it needs to be put in. Like I can't believe that isn't a thing. It's yeah, it's just weird because one of their whole things was like Night City, the the new in immersive RPGs. Like this is something that GTA has been doing since GTA three. Yes. So like that is like an unacceptable, annoying thing. And you might say, Well, I don't care about cars, so I don't care that I don't do that because I wouldn't do it anyway. Or does changing your car change the story? No, but it's a big immersive RPG that's been in the in the works for eight years. I expect that kind of thing. Next yeah. issue. And 
I'll just jump in. I don't know if you're going to come onto this in terms of immersive RPGs. Um, can't get a haircut. Yeah. Can't change yeah your hair. Okay. I was going to say that, but we'll put it in now. Can't get a haircut. Can't change your. Can't change your makeup. Can't change your tattoos. Can't change your nail polish. Uh, can't change your beard. Why? No idea. So that's missing as well. Uh, so the next problem is, unless you steal a car in front of cops, they don't give a shit. Apparently, they don't. No one reports that their car just got jacked by some asshole. Yeah, the 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 police in this game leave a lot to be desired. So uh, it's it's one of those things where it's like in GTA Five, it was slightly annoying. It was slightly overboard. You stole a car, and they seemed to immediately know. So stealing a car beca- became like potentially quite pointless sometimes, especially in GTA Online. It was impossible. But in this game, there's no middle ground. If you steal it in front of a cop, that's it. Yeah, you got cops on you. If you steal a car and no one sees, you've just got a car now. Yeah. Until you leave it somewhere and forget about it. Bizarre. Yeah. Um, I have written here, first person, should this be third person? The thing is, is that if you're going to do first person, you better be damn sure that the, the shooting mechanics and everything are great. The other thing that this does is it makes customization a bit question marky. Because you can't see everything you've done. Like, a lot of this game is to do with the, the punk, the cyberpunk thing. You could, be, you're, like, it's all about, hey, man, what's what's new on the street? I need to meet some new dreads. And it's like, okay, cool, I've put on, I've put on some really bright-coloured pants um, and some welding goggles. I can't see them. And that's a real yeah. shame because it's, it feels like it should be this huge <sighs> integral part. It, and you've got all these adverts like in the sky and everything and then these billboards that talk to you and it's like, all that matters is what you look like and stuff like this. Yeah, I, don't know why, yeah, yeah. Why, I don't know what I look like because I did yeah. it at the start of the game and unless I and- press I and look at my my <laughs> inventory, I can't see myself. <laughs> hey, you can look down at your shoes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's about it. So Yeah, it, it, it makes you just equip everything for its armor rating, which is something yeah. that like... Is, is an option in RPG games, but there are some people that ju- that will just play through a whole game in an outfit that they like the look of because, you know, that's, and, and that's, this, that's more important to them, but you don't get that This is option. one of those games where I was prepared to, to like, have a crap armor rating because I, I was playing Cyberpunk, because I yeah, was yeah. playing... I, I've decided on this run-through to kind of make me uh, rather than, like, a dude or a girl that is just, like, I'm, I'm just playing as. and Yeah. So I would have made this person feel like me in that scenario. But now I don't care because I can't see it and it doesn't matter. So I'm just picking the highest armor rating. So God knows what I'm wearing. It's probably a corset and uh, a tight skirt for yeah. what I know. I also put on like a pair of basically denim hot pants fairly towards the start I, of the game that inexplicably I, I had a higher, a higher armor rating than a pair of like leather biker trousers. <laughs> and people have asked for, I think, it, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like essentially transmuting. Transmuting, um, it's not called that. It's called something else. I think but I've forgotten what is where you can keep the everything the base stats you can keep, but you change the the, it's the, the way it looks. The only thing you change about it is the way it looks. Um, but there's no system to do that in game, and there's no reason to put it in because there's no third person. So first person or third person? We had this debate with Mass Effect. Um, mm-hmm. Really, it depends on the game they're making. Now that we definitely know it's Mass Effect Four, it has to be third person. I think I think we both would agree that. Yeah. yeah With this yeah. game, the shooting is like it's no, it's no Battlefield, it's no Modern Warfare. I mean, one thing that I'm happy about at least is that you can like run and slide and climb things and stuff. But it's not super tight. It's not super satisfying. I think this would have actually been more immersive in third person, and this was a bad decision. Uh, and okay. we would have been able to have seen our character. Uh, and I, I, I really am starting to truly believe that. It's taken me a while to like rationalise that, but I think that is true. Well, it, it definitely makes a lot of sense why most RPGs are third person. It's something I don't generally think about in that, yeah, now it makes a huge amount of sense as to why I would want to put certain clothes on my character. But having said that, Destiny is... M- you know, ninety percent first person, and um, you can change the way your character looks. So I mean, like, but it's a very different game, and it's it def- is it is yeah. They, but yeah. they've done first person shooting correctly in that game. Um, yeah, I mean, my experience of shooting has been celebrating when I kill something because it's like 
trying to shoot someone with someone flicking a light switch on and off every time <laughs> I get a gun out. But um, so I can't I can't hugely talk to, to to combat annoyingly just because it's about twelve FPS every time I have a battle. Yeah. Um, um, have you got what's what's next on your list? Next is to do with uh, customizability. Um, I really I applaud the fact that they used like uh, presets instead of sliders um, because it's it's less faff. Like when you have a slider that's like an infinite slider from left to right, uh, it leads you with like too many options, you know, just ballparking stuff. When you've got like face one, face two, or chin one, chin two, chin, like it's an easy way of like picking something and approximating what you want your person to look like if you're trying to make it look like someone, whether that's yourself or whether you're just going to flick them from left to right until you find something that you just like. Um, So I applaud them for that. The problem I had with it is um, on some of them, there just aren't enough. There aren't enough customizability options for some reason. And also I'm annoyed that for some reason they didn't have a separate one for chin. It was just like, they didn't have high cheekbones or chin, but they had jaw. So like you could do the sort of entire bottom area of your face in one preset and it needed, it needed another one for chin and it needed one for cheekbones. I was a little bit surprised just because of all of the hype around. You can even like, you can even customize your teeth. You can even customize your genitalia. I thought this was going to be the most detailed character customization like ever created. It really isn't. I I was genuinely a bit surprised. Yes, it's very easy to do, but I, it was annoying because I've got, I got to a point where I was like, hey, this character is really starting to look like me. And then Mm. you just hit a wall where it's like, Ah, oh, that's a shame. Like you said, the jaw thing. It's just like, well, he sort of looks like me, but he has a totally different face shape than I do. Yeah, you just suddenly run out of options. So they needed they needed those two extra options, but they also needed there aren't enough there aren't enough male beards and there aren't enough male <laughs> hairstyles. And the so cut, you're, co- you're and coming out with some corkers. There aren't enough male beards. <laughs> there, there aren't enough male hairstyles and the colours aren't aren't normal enough. As in, there are some weird hair colours we can have highlights and stuff. Yeah, That's great. Yeah, yeah. There are, it took me, I cycled through the 10 colours what they had about 14 times because I couldn't find freaking brown. I yeah, give work, me a normal brown. Yeah, I could yeah, not yeah. figure out which one was red or like blonde and which one was brown. I think I found it, but I've no clue. I so, had to turn the brightness all the way up on my TV just to see that it was brown. Yeah. So, like, that, there's the other problem. The other problem is there's not enough, like, just general options for some of the other things. There are about three tattoo options, not enough. You can have your nails short or long. Why aren't there options to have, like, n- no nails, like in a gross way or some sort of cybernetic <laughs> mod? Or yeah. broken nails or dirty nails. Like, just more stuff. Like, I probably wouldn't have used any of them, but that's not the point. And also... Um, what else was there? Not- like, two penis sizes, man. If you're going penis sizes, I want to I want to go there's, through inches. There's three. Oh, is it three? Okay, fair do. There's three. You can have small, medium, and... Uh, well, medium is called default and large. There aren't actually... And, and I'm going on to genitalia now, so so get ready. <laughs> They're not, and there's actually not enough genitalia options. If you're going to give me the option to change my freaking penis and make a big thing about it in the marketing as if it's some mm, yeah. new progressive thing, give me more options. All I can do is change whether I'm circumcised or not and whether it's small or big. Yeah. Why can't I change, like, the way it leans? Give I don't me, mean to be Give crass. me a robot dick. Like I don't mean to be crass, but like, why can't why aren't there more options? Why can't I change the side of size of my balls or the, like <laughs> the way they hang? Do, do, do you know what I mean? I know it's gross, you wanted but to like, be able to you're zoom. giving me the options in yeah, the first yeah, place, yeah, so yeah. give me more. You wanted to get that zoom right in on the peen, and you could just slightly adjust like the angle and that sort of thing. And, and then there's one vagina, which is slightly bizarre. Like, what is that about? Anyway, uh, I'm gonna we'll move on. Uh, so what else is there? Uh, the game takes forever to update acquired items list. So um, you could finish a mission and it's still going, here's a gun you picked up. Yeah. Here's a gun you picked up. Here's another gun you picked up. Here's the money you got for that mission you completed five minutes ago. Here's that knife you picked up. Yeah. And you can, if you get in a car, it stops. So if you go for a five minute drive and get out, you're still acquiring items, apparently. Uh, so I was, Whoa, I got a new jacket. <laughs> I was guessing that's some, like, that need, just needs a fix. I was guessing that's some weird performance thing, unless that is just how they envisioned it. I don't know, but it's an, it's it's annoying. Yeah, no, um, I, I agree with you. Uh, I'm going back to something you said here. Um, hacking is boring. Um, the, the hacking mini game where you're acquiring what, acquiring what they call daemons is fine. The, the I, I1, BD, yes, yeah, 1C yeah, yeah. stuff, yeah. that's fine. That ha- that's a hacking game. We've seen many yeah. hacking games. Yeah. Hacking in combat is pointless waste time. There is, 
it it just takes you out of the moment when the action's happening and the music's pumping and you like just hold a button and then like look at someone and then decide right what am I going to do uh, I'm going to make you hot like it's pointless like shoot a guy that's how you kill someone it, it it's this it's just like what's the point which leads me on to and again I caveat this point with the fact that I'm early in the game cyber upgrades are mostly passive and very boring there is no iron manning in this game so so you remember in the last episode I, uh, I said that I wanted to like stand there like a tank and kind of like auto lock missiles. Yeah, yeah. What I have in my head is that moment in the first Iron Man movie from 2008 where Tony Stark has just made the Iron Man suit, goes over to like some random Middle Eastern cu- country and goes there to save hostages. And there's a moment where like five guys all hold like women and children with guns to their heads and they're like shouting in some vague Arabic language. So Tony Stark like puts his hands down as if he's like surrendering to them and then it automatically like picks out which is civilians and which ones are bad guys and a little shoulder mounted rocket like points up and goes ding and then goes Pew! and just takes them all out that was the kind of gameplay i wanted i mean you've got something very specific in mind there yes but have you played deus ex from square enix you can do that oh, that's the new, what yeah, i wanted the new one yeah yeah that's what I was expecting. So if you're expecting anything other than Blaze coming out of your arms, there is nothing. You are not going to be turning your arm into a Mega Man uh, ca- cannon. This is extremely disappointing because I, cause like there are, uh, again, avoiding spoilers, there are people that are basically like giant robots in this game with like arm cannons and shoulder-mounted rocket What's launchers. What's his name? Johnny... Uh, no, the big guy... D- um... I know who you Smasher? mean. Smasher? Something remember. Smasher? I don't know. Smash, something Smasher. Yeah. I was expecting like, whoa, this is going to be mad. There are going to be so many different upgrades. The upgrades are basically passive. If you go through that list, it's like put something in your arm. Ah, good. you got more armor. Put something in your eyes. Uh, something to do with scanning. Well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's boring. It's got <laughs> nothing. To, it's just nothing, man. It's all about, it's just all about the weapons you pick up. So yes. if you're expecting yeah, yeah. some really intricate, like hyper cyber combat, basically it boils down to, are you using a gun? Are you using melee? Okay. You're using melee. Do you want a katana, a knife or a hatchet? Okay. You're using guns, sniper, shotgun, submachine gun, assault rifle or pistol. That's the game. And it's so disappointing. But do you um, think you were led to believe that you could Iron Man? Uh, the thing is, is that I, unfortunately, Cyberpunk is one of the tabletop games I haven't played. I have not played Cyberpunk and Traveller and um, uh, the Lovecraftian one, mm-hmm. but I have played like D and D and Vampire and a few other things. But like, I, I just I, maybe it was a bad assumption on my part. But like, I was expecting. You look at the trailers, and you remember the original trailer, the blades coming out of the arms and stuff. I was like, "Ooh, there's going to be some cool things going on." Yeah, and then yeah, we yeah. saw in the trailers people with like arm cannons and like those shoulder-mounted rocket launchers. So in my brain, I was like, "Oh, this is going to be. This could be mad. This would be great." Nope. It's just like ah, you put a leg mod in. Ah, you can jump higher now. Brilliant. When do I ever need to freaking jump? Basically, <laughs> never. Um. The, the, the final, the very final thing I'll say that's not really a bad or a good thing is, um, again, avoiding spoilers, is there's like a nod to the Matrix that really made my eyes roll, and it is when you first meet Keanu Reeves' character. Yeah, and like on the one hand, I was like, I suppose it's got to be done. Yes, well, well done. But on the other hand, it was literally like the big. I mean, those. I, I don't know. Avoid the spoiler, but yeah. weren't they the biggest props you've ever seen in your life? Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just yes. like, come on. Uh, later in the game, you wouldn't have got here. There is a, it's more than a reference, but there's a portal reference. Nice. Portal. portal. Excellent. But it's, but it's more than a reference. And it, I was smiling my ass off the oh, whole great. way through it because it was so good. Yeah, um, I've, I've so also the... seen some other Easter eggs to other games that I won't spoil um, that can be found, which is cool. So that's good. Yeah. So the game like definitely knows how to like kick back a little bit and not take itself too seriously. Um, I'm kind of hoping there's a mission where like Johnny tells you that someone killed his dog or something. Yeah, I'm um, waiting for a John Wick reference. I mean, even in John Wick, cool. they went hard on the Matrix references with the whole, like, I need guns, lots of guns, yeah, like yeah. stuff like that. So all of those things put together, um, if, it, you know, if it, if, if it was one, if, let's pretend that everything I've said, there's no problem with, and we were, and it boiled down to the first person versus third person. I probably would have been at this point where it's like, 
it, this is so great. All the cybernetic cybernetic things feel really integral. I'm, I've I've got these these rockets and I've got these sensors and things and I can play the game my way. Driving's great. Uh, what else did I think? The, the sat nav just works. You know all yeah, this yeah. sort of thing. Loads of loads of customizability. Whether it's a, a, on my person or the car. Blah 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 blah. And it boiled down to just oh I'm not sure about the first person though. That that's at the point where I'd have been like, this is a nitpick at this point because yeah, I'm enjoying yeah. the crap out of this game. I'm afraid all of th- these things have culminated into me thinking, just sort of tapping my fingers and going, I like the characters and the story enough to give this time of day. Okay, that's where you're and at. That, that's where you've and arrived that's at. Where I'll wrap up where I'm at. Yeah, I, th- I think a, l- a lot of it is it's a victim of its own hype. Like seven years in the making and being announced that long ago, like. People are just gonna. The, the the sky is the limit in terms of like what this game could have been. I, I, I mean, I've played yeah. very very little of it, and I've enjoyed. I mean, I, I can barely play it, but what I've played of it, I'm like, yeah, I can tell I'm gonna love this. Um, and I'm sort of just enjoying it for for what it is. And the issue is that like, yeah, the driving's not fun, and it feels like a slightly worse version of what they do in GTA. And like there there are various things that just don't feel quite there. But the 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 issue is is that I expectations were so, so, so high that if you I, I feel as though that if you have in mind like what this game could have been it is only going to be a disappointment based on the level of hype. I think the, the, I, think, I, I, I don't know. I think it's, you sum it up that the sky could be the limit. Yeah, I mean the thing to remember is that like what bothers me won't necessarily bother another person. Yeah, um, but for me, there's again if there were, if there were far fewer things that were bothering me, I would have been I would have been raising these as possible. What do you think about this? I'm not sure about this, or this kind of bothered me rather than a big negative, which is how it's now coming across to me. Is yeah. that all these things culminate into just one big like there's too much wrong with like with or not right with this to yeah for me to accept it yeah I, t- I i get what you're saying and i wonder if like if they hadn't marketed the hell out of it and promised well, i mean obviously the expectation was high but they also promised quite a lot in in saying that this will be the true next gen role uh, immersive role-playing game um they they said yet, that still released it on the yeah the so well did that but but more so like that that conjures things in head, like you said about the customi- customization and things like that. Makes you things like I'm going to be able to do things to my character that I've never been able to do in other RPGs. Um, whereas really, they sort of stayed at a similar level of the kind of things you could do with. I mean, you could get a haircut with Geralt. They sim- stayed at a similar like level to that. Um, they ha- they haven't really lived up to their promise. But at the same time, I think that the the hype the hype has left people saying things like, "Oh, but they could have done this with it." They could could have they could have mm. gone they could have gone further with all of these things whereas we, really i think what we what we need to do is take take everything on face value and say is this thing that it's doing good or bad and i and i think a lot of the things that you bring up i agree with in terms of things like yeah just simple things like the sat nav things like um yeah the th- i think the first person third person one is 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 fascinating and also yeah just the fact that you, so much of this game is based on aesthetics and you can't even see what your character looks like is 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 ridiculous i mean i don't want to leave this on a huge downer because the bottom line is is i'm going to keep playing because i am enjoying it but i do believe that all the nitpicks and caveats that i've made are are legitimate concerns and they do you know wind me up when i'm playing it yes yeah, but yeah. i'm enjoying it and i'm yeah. enjoying the characters um so i'm going to keep playing it's not like i'm i'm sitting here vying for a, for a refund and we will also return to to a cyberpunk chat some point in 2021 yeah, um, because we will obviously want to see if it's in, if the experience has improved for well yeah i'll, um, I'll be picking it up again hopefully when those big fixes are made in january so yeah so we'll see so don't i so we'll i think i think i think we've probably rinsed that topic for all it's worth <laughs> for now yeah but we don't want to leave it on a big downer no. because bottom line i am enjoying it yeah there, i am enjoying it there, okay? I, I, and i think what you said was right there is a great game there um and there but there is also a level to which there are factually things that you can choose to overlook or not. I think you made a great point there in that there are things that could be a lot better and it's mm. it's whether or not you're willing to just soak in the the vibe, yeah. the story and like the fun elements to overlook those things. It's, it's, it's definitely a case-by-case basis, but for me, all these things kind of add up and it's like, come yeah, on, guys. Yeah. Eight years, why is, why is this the case? 
It is weird, man. But, I'm, but annoyingly, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. So I don't know what that says about the game. They've, they've, done, they've done a lot right. It's just that they, yeah, like we said, didn't quite deliver it up to it. But we'd love to know what your thoughts are. If you are someone who listens to the podcast and has Cyberpunk 2077, I know, Lowell, you have got it. Um, and I saw you did an awesome thread on Twitter talking about your thoughts. But if you want to summarize them in an email, please do that. But yeah, if, if any of you are listening and you've played Cyberpunk or are thinking about getting it and maybe aren't now, but just let us know what you're thinking of the game and what if you wish it could be better and what you would like uh, it to improve on but that's i mean we disagree with me do you hate me now (laughs) there'll be some diehard cdpr (laughs) fanboys that are like well i'm unsubscribing um but yeah thank thank you so much uh to everybody for listening to that um next week we're going to do our our christmas special aren't we we are indeed and that christmas special uh Next week will re- uh, will be released on Boxing Day. It's going to be a roughly two hour special focusing solely on cyber. Sorry, on <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> Everything Star Wars. We're going to be uh, talking about the films. Uh, I- I've not watched The Mandalorian, but I'm sure we'll s- find oh. a way of sticking some Mandalorian oh, in there. Yes, mate. Final episode uh, of season two tomorrow. Oh, mate, and all the and all the goodness that is the Star Wars video games of course so it's going to be a big star wars special for you yeah so and and in preparation for that we're probably going to be uh if all goes to plan recording on tuesday uh which will be yes. tuesday the 22nd um please get in any star wars related feedback as well i know a lot of you listening are fans of star wars let us know your faves and worsts in the star wars uh universe that would be great you can do that by emailing fave film fave film fave video game Worst, worst video game, worst soundtrack worst moment, um, all those things. All those things. Yeah, email in at pushingbuttonspod at gmail dot com, baby. And you can also get in contact on our social media, or just follow us if you're not already on Twitter at PB Podcast UK and Instagram at Pushing Buttons Pod. Yeah. And, uh, uh, uh. And the podcast itself is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Anchor, and Radio Public. So please share it around and leave reviews and all that good stuff. Radio uh, Puglich. Hit him up. We, we, we appreciate all the feedback and, of course, your listenership. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for the email, Jiggy. Appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you next week for some festive Star Wars shenanigans. Hope you're all well and surviving out there. And uh, uh, lots of love to you all. Um, uh, <laughs> It's a good night for me and a good night for him. I know. All right. I know. I know. I know. I Bye. Jules Holland. <laughs> Jules Holland. Jules there, Holland there. Just uh, signing off the podcast. Hey, 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 hey.